what's your take on live albums? Do you like live albums? Is it something that you're like, oh, I'll listen to that once? Or do you do you not like them at all? I like them. I think it just depends on who it is. And no, I, I mean, if it's a if, it, if it's a live album from a band I enjoy. Yeah, absolutely. But would you listen to it more than once? Um, like, like if, if you have the choice of, okay, I'm listen, listen or watch, watch, watch is a different thing for totally sure. Different. Cause you get the crowd experience and all that kind of stuff too. Uh, I'm talking just listening. Here's why I ask because you know that Lincoln park is putting out their 20th anniversary of the Me- Meteora album. And it's one like of their, a, one of my least favorite records by them, by the way, we'll get no into that. Way, in really? Yeah. Wow. Good. Uh, Sorry. But anyway, so this, I, I don't know if you've looked at this, but, this is a big record and it has a lot of just like that last one they put out. It's got a lot of live music on it and stuff. Yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. And I was just thinking that's fun and all. And Lincoln Park is one of my favorite bands of all time. But I don't know that I would ever like more than a couple of times listen to an actual live record. You never listen Watch- to that live in Texas? I CD? did. Okay. I did. That's but, a good one. But again, I would rather watch the, you know, watch it. Oh, sure than to listen to it. And if I'm going to listen to, you know, a, a hybrid theory or a Meteora album, I would rather listen to the regular album than listen to him seeing it live. Yeah. I mean, but that's such a good, that was such a well done live DVD and live CD. That's true. That's true. I could listen to the CD. I still have it somewhere. I can yeah. still listen to it. Um, and I did listen to it when I got it, but it was so well done. And th- dude, if you got it, th- if you think about when that came out, how well produced that was, and this is before, you know, like, People complain about tracks these days, but th- dude, that band did all of those, like all of that stuff without tracks. Now they had DJ Han or whatever, and he added a lot, a, a huge element of what made that band so palatable to just everyone, I think, is the elements that he brought to the table with the electronics, with the the mixing, the production that he did. But yeah, that's that's such a masterful live performance within itself. And then the DVD and the CD to come along with it was great. I, I, dude, I, I wore that thing out. I was oh, so pumped for that tour. That was from the summer sanitarium tour with Metallica. Yeah. Was that Oh three Oh four probably. I want to say Oh three. Oh three. We've talked about this before, I think, because I remember I specifically did. when it got announced, I was like, I was trying out for a band and I went to like a tryout for a band the day that it got announced. And these dudes were all like Lincoln park haters. They're like, why would they put, Lincoln Park and Mudvayne on a show with, or no, I think it was like, I think they were pro Mudvayne, pro Deftones. Not so, oh, they, they hated Limp Bizkit and Lincoln Park, but like, why would they lump in Deftones and Mudvayne with Lincoln Park? Lincoln Park, I'm like, oh, kind of all ruled to me, dude. I think that's a great fucking tour. <laughs> <laughs> I, got I was like, but I'll keep my mouth shut on this one. Yeah. I didn't join that band, obviously. Yeah, that was such a well done live CD. Can I, I'll tell you, I'll clue you in a little secret. The fir- the one of the very first CDs I owned, and I listened to it, but I, I was young, 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 young. But I listened to it over and over and over. Was a Woodstock '69 live CD. Interesting. C- CD or cassette yeah. tape? It was a CD. It was a CD. Okay. I got okay. it. I got it for like a birthday, or because I remember telling, it might have been from my parents, but I, I can't remember. But I remember telling them like I really love Jimi Hendrix. I really love like so and Jimi Hendrix had the you know the Star Spangled Banner and Purple Haze were on there and they like you know they had like uh oh god Joe Cocker was on there like it was great it was a great fucking CD yeah but you know live from 1969 <laughs> is, you know and this wasn't like a remastered version like it was the tracks from but it was so great I wish I know I have that somewhere too I need to find that I'm sure you could down, you could buy it on iTunes sure, now, but yeah. I don't know if I want to do that I'd rather just rock it old school but yeah. I, dude i wore that thing out i wore it out i listened to it but this is like you know this is my days of like locking myself in my room and listening to music for hours and hours and hours yeah. with the lava lamps bro and the fucking yeah like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. did you have a black light are you telling me you have like a black light and black light poster? i did not yeah. i did not have no, no no i didn't get that crazy but i had you know what i had was i i put you know lights up in my room like christmas lights yeah, and a lava lamp, and yeah, yeah. You know, I had a lava lamp at one the, point. Set the mood. Yeah. Yeah. I spent a lot of time in Spencer's gifts. <laughs> yeah, with Lincoln Park, how do we start talking about them? Oh, yeah, the, they're releasing the live. Yeah. The live. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, if they, uh, one of their better live performances, and I think really set them apart from everybody during the time, was when they played 
Rock and Ring 2005. Have you ever watched that? I think so. You need to go if you have it. You need to go watch that because it was they brought. It was right after they did the uh, the CD with Jay Z. Okay. So they did a lot of that stuff live, and you know, obviously all the the hits that they had already accumulated in four years or whatever. Like you fucking assholes, like Jesus. <laughs> but yeah, no. So Alternative Press did a, an article that was like they they ranked all of the Linkin Park albums, right? So I was like, oh well, let me go ahead and do that, and I posted yeah, it on I Facebook. Seen, but yeah, I seen you posted that. But yeah, Meteoras. They had you know, so of the seven, Meteora is number six, in my opinion. Did they have more sing like big singles off of Meteora than they did off of Hybrid Theory? It was close, right? I want to say they had the same amount, but no song they no song did better than In the End. In the End yeah, has like a bill, it has like a billion views on yeah. YouTube. Weren't they like yeah. one of the first ones to hit that, or maybe the first one to hit a billion views on YouTube? I think they were. I think that was the first one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but my so I did one more light is number seven. Like it's fine. It's I didn't really I didn't really like it that much. Although it, it's sort of sad because that was right before Chester died, and you yeah. know that song one more light. You could really feel something's yeah. a little bit off here. Maybe uh, Meteora, the Hunting Party, Minutes to Midnight, Living Things, A Thousand Suns. I think A Thousand Suns is one of their. It's it's easily their most underrated record, but I think it's one it's one of the most underrated records. Period. I love that fucking record. I think yeah. it's so good. Everybody bitched and they were like, they made a fucking techno record. I'm like, dude, it's not techno. Go listen to it. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of electronics on it, but it's not a techno record. Right. And so what if they did? And if they did, I think they pulled it off. And then obviously, you Hybrid Theory, if Hybrid Theory is not number one, if you're like, even like, a, I'm half and half on Lincoln Park. Like, I don't like them. I don't hate them. But, and if you go, oh, Hybrid Theory is not their best city, you're an asshole. <laughs> there's... <laughs> that album like changed I, I, I kind of, everything. I kind of agree. Yeah, I kind of agree. So the the song they put out was uh, for the single on this was called Lost. Yeah. Uh, so are they saying that that was like recorded uh, during the same time they were recording Meteora and it just did make it on the record or yeah. do you know they are? Yeah, it was it was a Meteora B side, if you will. So I, yeah, I listened yeah. to that and I, I don't know about you, but that did not feel like that a song for that album. I felt like maybe um, about two albums later. Maybe that's why they didn't like, put it on there. Yeah. Cause I say it didn't feel like a minutes to midnight at all either. Yeah. So I, I mean, I, it, it definitely felt more like a, uh, like a living things song. Yeah. I think so. And maybe that's why they didn't put it on there because I, to me, Meteora is a repeat of hybrid theory. I just don't think it's executed as well. I think they got a little more adventurous with the poppiness, you know, songs like numb. And, and I remember them even talking about that because they, they debuted or started playing numb like it hadn't even been released as a single yet but they started playing it at summer sanitarium and like we don't know how this is gonna fucking go we're in front of metallica fans and metal fans and we're gonna bring out this piano and like ugh. but seemed to do just fine so yeah yeah i just saw that mike shinoda co-wrote demi lovato's new single oh really yeah i did not read the story i just saw the headline and i go well that makes sense doesn't surprise me one bit why? Because I think he's a good writer, and oh, okay. <laughs> probably, he's you. probably okay. written for a lot of other people that we don't we don't know about. Well, it's I just I just thought maybe there was a connection there that you knew that I didn't. I no, I'm just making the connection that I think he's a good songwriter, and uh, doesn't surprise me. God knows Demi Lovato's not writing her songs. No offense, no <laughs> offense. Were you a Fort Minor fan? I I'm gonna be honest. I didn't dig into them much besides the the main. I think he had one or two, right? What was yeah, the yeah. What was the main single that? Right, the twenty percent luck, eighty percent skill, blah, 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 blah. power of yeah, will, right? That, uh, that's no, that's a song. That's not. That's not know. the big one, though. I don't think it's not. No, I don't think so. Hang on, here, make me look it up. Because I, I, I remember the beat because MGK used it for a freestyle. That oh, really? Blew him up on YouTube. Yeah. 100 Words and Running was his freestyle that he did that. What the fuck was that song called? Sure? Or was it a slower song? It was a slower song. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. The Rising Tide was the name of the record. Came out in 2005. It went platinum. God Is it Where'd it. You Go? Where'd You Go? Is that it? Yes. With Holly Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It had a female yeah. singing on it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that song was huge. I forgot it. Remember the name is the song that I'm talking about. Yeah. And that song went platinum. Actually, Remember the Name was a bigger song for them. It went four times platinum. No way, really? Where'd you go? Went platinum. 
Dude, this dude is balling, huh? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> what the fuck, man? How many platinum fucking records and songs does this guy have? I can't believe he hasn't done more solo stuff. I mean, he really, he's only put out like one or two albums, right? Yeah. One was just a couple of years ago. Mike Shinoda's estimated net worth is $65 million. Not bad. Did you just say not bad <laughs> to $65 million? <laughs> Come on, dude. It's pretty good. Well, what did Bieber just sell his catalog for? Two hundy. Like four. Two hundy. I think so. Two hundred million. On top of what he was already worth. So <laughs> on top of what he was already worth. What do you think his net worth is? This is always a fun game. Uh now, yes, go ahead. Yeah. Uh I'm gonna say, I don't know, let's say seven hundred. Did we talk about that on the show that we we talked oh. about him selling the What'd catalog? Seven hundred million? Yeah, that's what I'm going with. It says three hundred million. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say that doesn't count as catalog. So he's at least five hundred, I bet. Because didn't I mean didn't wasn't what he makes per show like an outrageous number? I'm pretty sure we put, we looked at like up a million on. bucks, yeah. Yeah. Beyonce's net worth is five hundred million, and I just got to know a little more. I want to know what Ed Sheeran's net worth is. That fucking rich troll, two hundred million. Anyway, I like Ed Sheeran. Okay. Talking shit. The live 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 CD, sure. Yeah, I'm into them. It's but you know I can't remember the last one that I actually listened to. Maybe the. Uh, it probably would have been the uh, Bring Me the Horizon at that symphony hall with the, the orchestra and stuff. Okay. I remember, no, no, I watched it. I didn't listen to it. I watched it on YouTube. So, I don't know. I'll be interested to see that, though. I'll be interested to see how well that does for them. Obviously, it's going to do well enough, but I'm curious to see. I mean, that song got a good reception for the most part from what I've seen. Did it? Okay. I, I think. I mean, I, I you know. But also, why? If you hate on that, like you're what? What are you doing? Yeah. At, at this point, anything they release is just a it's it's a a monument to Chester and his memory, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, we've talked about it before. I really don't know that they could they replace him. A, it would be hard to do. B, I don't think that those guys are. I don't know that they want to. I don't know that I would want to either. I mean. Yeah, exactly what you just said. Like you, you. I don't think you can. You can't. You're not going to get another Chester. And well, I'll say this: there's some, there's ten or fifteen undiscovered people out there that are as good and could sing as well as him and could do what he did. Let me just say this: none of them are are established musicians. Yeah, yeah. they're not people we know, right? They're they're it's it's a journey type situation. It's the it's the kid doing karaoke somewhere or whatever, you know. But who's to say that that I. It, that's a very tough one, man. That's why I love that. That uh, I guess the movie Rockstar with Mark Wahlberg was loosely based off the Judas Priest story. You know, they they basically got a fan to replace. Was it Judas Priest? Yeah, Judas Priest uh, nice. got a fan to replace Rob Halford. And I think one of the things that the movie Rockstar pointed out was like it's hard to find your own thing if you've been focused on, like, if you're a guy like the Mark Wahlberg was in that movie, like you've been a tribute artist for so long you don't feel comfortable in your own skin you don't know how to be your own front man your own person on stage your, your own thing like when he went to do the records like no no it's already written like you're not going to contribute to this and that's very interesting to think about because i would hate to be i you know what i just watched i watched a few episodes of it the the velvet revolver story when they were trying to find a singer i love that's one of my favorite things is when scott wyland just kind of casually scott wyland's into the room Everybody's uh -huh. like, hey, hey, dude, what's going on? It's like, you guys, you guys ready to do it? Like, that's how calm he was. And like, he contributed to something because there wasn't an established vocalist to replace. That's why it works so well. It's hard to do, man. Yeah, for sure. I I don't know that fans would receive Linkin Park well if they tried to replace. Because maybe it's just a, it's just that situation with that band. I don't know. And I, I'm not. I don't want to say it would be disrespectful to try to replace him to try to continue on as Lincoln Park, but I don't know. It's just it, it's that it, it, that's what it is. It's that band and that yeah. duo of Mike and Chester. I think you know it just. I, I'll I'll say that if they do it, they're going to have to get someone who not only can sound like him, but can have. I think the person they replace him with will have to sound like him, but also have eerily similar personality on and off stage and see you I understand, what I, you understand what i mean by that 
I think so. Like, I feel like if it's a guy who's too cool for school, it's going to rub people. It would just wouldn't work. Like I saw uh, the tribute concert to him. You know, they did a, a tribute where they brought all of the guys that played that night on stage and they did, I want to say they did bleed it out. No, maybe I can't remember. But the main person singing on the song was M Shadows from Avenged Sevenfold. And he was doing a good job. But I, I thought about like, what if they got that dude to replace him? That would be weird. And I know that like, I watched an interview with him in it recently. And I was like, that dude is so down to earth. I was not expecting that. I guess I'd never watched an interview or heard him speak other mm-hmm. than on stage. I was like, that dude seems really cool. The whole persona of like the sunglasses inside and the fucking fangs and the the bandana. Fuck all that, dude. That's that's for the fucking show. Like he yeah. seemed really cool. Right. But if he brings that image onto stage to be in Lincoln Park, it's like, eek, I don't know if that works, man. You know? But, but honestly, I think I don't know if that works with that band, but I don't know. I don't know that m- getting somebody to because then it looks like you're really trying to replace Chester with another Chester. And then well, it, th- that's almost where it feels like kind of disrespectful to me. Kind of like, ah, uh, I, I don't know. But then again, you know, how many years are we talking now? How how many years has Chester been gone? Five, six. Five or six. So don't you, yeah. I mean, do you think that if they were ever going to decide to do it, they would have done it by now to move forward with the band? Potentially. I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, who knows? I mean, who knows what they got, what they have going on behind the scenes. They all have families. They all have their own stuff they want to do. And, you know, maybe it's all about timing. You know, I'm surprised and I haven't researched it to know, but I'm surprised we haven't seen like DJ Hawn on more albums. Yeah, they're 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 uh, That's what always struck me is like, uh, I don't know. Interesting about that band is they they when they came out, they were lumped into a genre of music that was considered to be edgy and heavy and kind of, you know, degenerate a little bit because of the other bands that were out of time, like Olympus get corn. And but they were like art kids, you know, like they were, they, they were, they looked the part, but they definitely weren't what they looked like, you know? So I, they're very, very interesting uh, to me. I, I am shadows. Like I said, he was singing well, whatever he was doing with them, but I, I don't know if he could pull it off vocally. Even he's a good singer. I'm not saying he's not good, but Chester's just, it's hard to replace. Yeah, M. Shadows is unique in his own way, though, I think. 100%. Yeah, yeah. He's another guy. Like, ah, that's that's tough to do. Yeah. I don't know if I, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I'm very, I'm incredibly envious and jealous of guys who have that natural uh, gravel in their voice. Yeah. I've never had it. Uh, I've always been a clean singer. I can get it, um, you know, at my peak and stuff, but I've never had it. And it's not something that you can fake. It has to be natural. It has to feel, it has to sound like it came from an organic place. If it sounds forced or fake, it's, it's, you know, and I've had people try to make me fake it. And as guys, it's not, you just, you don't understand. Like, uh, so I'm definitely like M shadows is one Chester was one, you know, uh, there are, well, there are tons of guys, but I, I always go back to this. I know I've said it on this podcast a thousand times, but you know, when that, um, the dude came in for three days grace and was trying to sound like Adam Gontier. or like he, yeah. he was trying thing. to have a grab, you know, a gravelly or a voice and stuff. And I'm like, man, this is not working for me at all. Yeah. It's, 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 you know, when someone's trying to sound like that, it's easy yeah. to tell. And you know, when someone that's just, that's just coming from their gut. Yeah. And I always said that about that guy. Like I would never, he would be like, give me, Give me any karaoke song. You know, you get me drunk and make me do karaoke, but don't give me a three days grace song. I'm not, I'll pull it off, but I'm not going to, it's not going to sound like three days grace. It's, it's, <laughs> it's going to sound like a karaoke three days grace, which is fine. But yeah, he's just got a weird thing with his voice. And he always got lumped into the, like the like Creed and shit. And I'm like, dude, he doesn't sing like that. It always pissed me off when people would like, they are butt rock. Don't get me wrong. But it pissed me off when people would say that he was that type of singer. He's not that type of singer at all. Like if you go listen to the, I mean, my favorite record is that one X record. I just think it's so underrated, but listen to songs on that, like no more. And do that dude. That's a, that's a really powerful, you know, from the pit of your stomach type voice that, yeah, again, yeah I get, I get jealous. I get jealous over guys like that because it's so, it sounds I mean, everybody, anybody who can sing, like it, it should be not effortless, but easy for them to sing in key and not be pitchy and like 
make it work. Yeah. But then there's attitude and there's tone, like I've talked about. And I would, I'd be interested to listen to some Three Days Grace, just vocal tracks, no music behind it. That would be a fun listen. I'm sure you could find them. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm going to so, look right now. So we're talking, you know, music that came up around like, oh, oh, three, oh, four, oh, five. What do you think about the new story of the year track, 2005? Uh, it's good. It's good. I like, I like what it is. Exactly. That's my thought. I like what it is. Um, yeah. It's them saying, we fucking love what we do. We don't care what you think about what we do. You don't care what you, we don't care what you have to say about our past, what you have to say about our future, and what you have to say about the present. We do this for us. That type, that type, that type of message. And I, I love that. And you know, it was funny. I was chatting with someone about it. I was texting with someone about it. And they made a comment and I was like, hey, you realize that's a little bit insulting, right? But they said it sounds like he's like, I like the he dang it. I gave away. Well, I gave away <laughs> the the person was like. <laughs> I like the song, but it sounds sort of like a midlife crisis song. Like a, I don't want to grow up song. I'm like, what's wrong with that? That's what music is supposed to be. It's supposed that's to what, be. That's to what be... that band is too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I was like, that's kind of insulting. Don't you think? And they were like, well, no, I don't mean it to be insulting, but it's like, I, how do you, he's, I guess they were saying like, do you think people will perceive it as that? And I go, so what? Who can't, who gives a fuck? Yeah. Uh, okay, you're not a fan. Fine, move on. But like, but also it's a good song, and it's coming from a record that already has incredible songs on it. Like, the, dude, that record's gonna that record's gonna be sick. Dude, so, War is really freaking good. Yeah, you know, it's it's they. I don't know what happened. I don't know what clicked with them. Is the like it feels like a different inspiration. That that's just what I hear. Being someone who's listened to them forever and knows them a little bit, has seen them live dozens of times. Like it feels like there's a different kind of inspiration and a different feeling with these songs. It almost feels like we're keeping it's it's like it's like a we want to keep this alive type mentality. And you can hear it in the music. And I think it's sick. I think it's great. Yeah, no, that that song's great. And the video, a lot of that footage you're seeing in that video is what got them to where they were when they got signed and got, you know, it's what got them popular in St. Louis for sure. And it's what got them noticed outside of St. Louis. All the antics on stage, off stage, the goofiness, the playfulness, the, you know, um, the, we don't take ourselves too seriously type mentality, that type of thing. Yeah. Um, and, and they, to be honest with you, they were the blueprint for so many bands in St. Louis. And I think I remember telling you the story on the show, but there were a couple of bands. I'm not going to name them, obviously that I remember meeting the guys in these bands and they really looked up to story story of the year in the beginning, like as they were getting signed. Like I said, story of the year was the blueprint. So these bands wanted to essentially, they thought they could just sort of recreate the story of the year success model. And I'm going, yeah, it's not going to work that way, but okay. And I had a couple of them like preaching it to me. And I'm like, I I'm not in story of the year. I don't do backflips on stage, guys. <laughs> like, I'm not like, I'm not going to be able to do that. Yeah. You know, and I don't want to sound like them either coming from the same city that's yeah. i'm still trying to establish myself in the city i don't want people going out oh, straight the ripoff i don't like but then after after page avenue came out they get all the success they dropped the second record those bands were just fucking haters just hating on them left and right like it's like what's wrong with you guys you guys should have I was inspired by story of the year, but these guys were like trying to hey, use hating as in a gel as in a jealousy thing. I don't know. I, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think it probably came from a jealous place. I think it was just sort of dick measuring. Well, another, you know, another thing we've talked about before, but it's kind of interesting in that, in that sense is that a lot of times record labels want, like are looking for a certain sound at that time. Right. So like, like multiple yeah. bands that sound the same. So you have people like trying to push you to sound like story of the year. Okay. Well, story of the year blows up. Our record label is going to be looking for other bands in that same city to be like, Oh, you sound like story of the year. Let's do this. Or it, do you not, or do they not want multiple bands that sound the same coming out of the same area because they don't think that's going to be successful. I don't know. That's interesting. It's an interesting I don't think they're going to look for bands that sound specifically like one band, but they'll look for bands that fit into a, a genre that's really hot at the time. Right. Pop punk, yeah. you know, the emo, screamo, you know, story of the year fits into the screamo 
I don't call it a phase because those bands never went away. New bands came out every year after that whole thing. After it wasn't mainstream any, anymore, new bands, there were dozens and dozens of bands that came out that were considered what I considered to be the same good bands, but the same type of bands. And they definitely wouldn't go to a city like, is there another band from the city that sounds just like this band? You know? Right. Yeah. I've heard you, of it before. You you know their uh, show at the pageant sold out, right? I saw. I, I Yeah, I didn't think it wouldn't, you know. Yeah. Hey, I mean, I guess it surprised me a little bit that it's it sold out so quickly. Like, I mean, we're still a few, like, almost a month out, right? I think people can feel what I'm talking about. I think they can feel this re-energized, sort of refocused thing. And I yeah. think they can hear it in the music, and I think they're excited. Yeah. And I think they should be excited, man. Those fucking new songs rip. And, of course, yeah. if you're a Story of the Year fan, you have, you know, dozens and dozens of songs from their catalog that you're going to know and love and and get to listen to live. And yeah, I mean, and obviously, you know, I mean, they're known for their live show and, and so it'll be, it should be a good time for those that go. I'm assuming you're not going. I, I, I might. I mean, I haven't, I haven't even thought about it. Wait, what is the date on that? March 12th, I think. Yeah, no, I'll have a fucking. Oh, you'd be, you'd be close. I'll have right. a little turdler, a little, oh, I'm be... sorry. Uh... When's the due date? Well, we're, she's due March 28th, but there's no way we make it to that. Okay. Then. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. I was, I had planned on going and I have friends that are going. Um, but the XFL home opener is the day after which we are going to. And I don't, I'm, uh, too old to do back to back situations like that anymore. <laughs> Plus, you know, I have the travel time to St. Louis twice, you know, two days in a row. I don't think that's happening. So how young would you have to be for you to do that? Uh, at least 10 years ago. That is sad, man. You're, no, you're I, 80. You're I, 80. I, take, I take that back. I take that back. I would say at least at least three years ago, before my son was here for sure. <laughs> that has definitely changed me. Yeah, fair enough. But uh, so yeah. I was going to say, so music topic wise, we can tie this into the Super Bowl a little bit too. Halftime show. Uh, let's get your overall thoughts on the halftime show. Yes, I enjoyed it. You did enjoy it. All right, sure. Okay. Yeah. New question. Did you I enjoy? Like it? Did you enjoy it? from the performance point of view or did you enjoy it because this is a pregnant woman doing this performance and i asked this specifically because i've seen this on social media hmm. this is a thing and because i posted on facebook saying that i think this is the worst super bowl performance i've seen i had a lot of people agreeing with me and a lot of people on the other side saying uh if you think about this from a pregnant woman doing this this is really impressive and this that and the other sure yeah i agree with that I didn't think about it in the moment. I thought it was like, oh, she's pregnant. Awesome. And then I just wanted to hear the songs that I know and like from Riri. Uh, I knew I knew three, I think. I enjoyed it. I mean, yeah, I enjoyed it. I, I don't – look, man. If you're looking for the Super Bowl halftime show to have some sort of artistic integrity, you need to turn it off and go put in a fucking Tom Waits CD while the fucking halftime show is going. I, I don't know what to tell you, but like you're not – that's not what the Super Bowl halftime show is. We know this. How did you just pull you know? Tom Waits out of your ass? I, I, you know, because Tom Waits fans are Funny. dorks that fucking like, he's, he's got a, you never sold out. Anyway, but I ha I did see a bunch of boomers, boomer rock critics and music critics and music people online bitching about the tracks and stuff. And then they're like, how long are we going to let this go? Now rock bands are doing it too. And I'm like, pop bands have, pop artists have always, they always lip sync at events like that. It's very rarely live. Like, who cares? And and enough with the tracks thing. It, it they tracks have always been used in some way, shape, or form. I'm just gonna have to get over it. I don't like when rock artists lip sync. Absolutely not. I don't care if you use vocal tracks, but if your your main vocal is a track, then I have a problem. But I especially yeah. don't mind if a pop artist like Rihanna lip syncs at the Super Bowl halftime show. I don't think her singing actually would make it any more or less entertaining. Do you? I just I don't mean, think about it that way because I, I mean, know you, what Rihanna you, is and I know what pop is. Do you think it's just covering up any mistakes? Like potential mistakes? She clearly wasn't singing and didn't attempt to once. I understand that. Okay. Tracks are well, are there. I'm, 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 okay, no, what I'm, what I'm saying is is that the lip syncing in general, you're on a, a Super Bowl performance. Like yeah. you don't want any mistakes to happen with your voice in general. So that's what I'm asking is the lip syncing because you're trying to cover not I didn't mean cover up when I said that. I meant avoiding 
any by limp yeah. syncing, you're avoiding any potential, you know, screw ups with your voice or anything like that. I think you're reading into it too much, man. I think it's, I think it's just it's a, a, it's a question. No, I, I get it. I get it. I, I think it's just uh traditionally speaking, that's what the Super Bowl halftime show is. I will tell you a time when people did actually sing, and it's one, it's probably, probably one of my favorite Super Bowl halftimes is, uh, the 2000 what was the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl that the Ravens and the Giants played. Is that 99 or 2000 to 2000, 2000, because it's a year after the Rams won. So that would have been 2000. And then the Rams okay. went again in 2001. So 2000, it was Aerosmith, Britney Spears, NSYNC, and Nelly. You remember that one? Vaguely. I need to go back and watch that again. Nelly came out and did his, I'm a sucker for corn rolls and manicured toes. Like I was wow. like, oh, dude, this dude is wild. Um <laughs> But you were happy. We were proud. Like, oh, fucking St. Louis, what the fuck? And he actually, he said something in an interview later on. Like, he said something about, because I think it was, like, at the time, him and Eminem, Eminem were beefing. And he might have been beefing with a few other guys. And, uh, you know, they're basically saying, like, he's he's country. He doesn't, like, you know, it's not real hip-hop. It's fucking pop cornball shit. He's like, that's cool. How many other rappers played the Super Bowl? Right. He had a point. He had a fucking point. Because up till then, I can't think of any. Did Run DMC it, do it before or after he did? So wait, that was that was doesn't that kind of suck though? Like that Nelly did the halftime performance the year in between two years that the Rams were in it. Yeah, it's bullshit, right? Because <laughs> I remember he wore a half and half jersey. He wore a half Ravens, half Giants jersey. How do my why does my brain hold on to some of these things? I can't fucking do basic arithmetic anymore, but I remember what jersey Nelly wore <laughs> at a Super Bowl halftime show. Let's get a list here. Let's get a list going. History started in 1980. How about that? That seems reasonable. Because that's when, you know, hip hop were, were coming up on the time of hip hop and the, the birth of hip hop. So, all right. I'm at 87. No hip hop. 88. Chubby Checker. The Rockettes. No hip hop. These are halftime shows that happened? Yeah. They were really New Kids on the Block. Back. 1991. 92. Gloria Stefan. Michael Jackson. Country. Teddy P. Patti LaBelle. Diana Ross, the Blues Brothers, Boys to Men, the Temptations. No, so I'm at 98, no hip hop. Dude, Nelly was the first fucking hip hop artist to play a Super Bowl halftime show. Yep. Wow. Yep, he was. Oh, yeah, Mary J. Blige was at that one too. I forgot about that. Like you said, well, you said Boys to Men. That would be more RB though, right? Versus hip hop. Yeah, don't work. That doesn't work. Good try. Actually, <laughs> guess what? Queen Latifah got him. Queen Latifah was there in 98. Oh, wow. Huh. I don't know what she did. I don't know if she rapped. But so anyway, he had a good point though. He's like, how many, how many, how many rappers you've seen at those doing the Super Bowl? You got a point there, Nelly. So and now uh, it was that's all it was last year. I guarantee you they go back to that next year. What do you to to rap again? Yeah. Do you who do you Where, think they like who who do you think they would bring out? Drake. I think they'll do like a young artist compilation. They'll do like Drake, Kendrick, Jack Harlow's cornball ass. Did you see you the think white they man throw- can't jump trailer? I'm sorry, I'm going way off topic uh, here, but did you? No, I haven't. I can't, up, I can't tell. Is, is this a I hate this or I love this? Do you think that I love it? No. But is I, I don't even know who's we, I, we vaguely talked about this right in the past. Like, yeah, Jack Harlow is having? playing the Woody Harrelson character. Oh yeah. All right. Let's. So upsetting. I'm out. I won't. This, you know, I know. I told you. You know, I told you. I hate watched you people. I will not hate watch this movie. I am. Hang on. Did you finish that? I did. We did. Oh, wow. How did that go? I hated it. It sucked. Why, it why pissed me you, off. It made me why, angry. Why did you finish it? We started it and we finished it. We didn't. We just fucking. Like, <laughs> <laughs> All right. We had see. Chinese food and we watched that terrible movie. <laughs> probably should have asked this earlier, but how much cash do you have on you? Did you not bring enough money to cover this game? I brought like 80 minus 60. Oh, 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 oh. Are you ready? Or bad jokes. What's up with your boy? He's almost done. I'm like the P.T. Anderson of basketball psychological warfare. Who is P.T. Anderson? Our greatest living director. Spike Lee is our greatest living director. Spike Lee is not even a good Knicks fan. I knew this was a mistake. Oh, 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 oh. Wait it all. Oh, God. Kill me. Just that kill me awful. now. That was awful. Kill Why me now. Why did you make me watch that? Why are they doing this to me? I'm telling you, man. They remake Back to the Future. Not Back to the Future 4. I'm talking about a remake of the original. <laughs> I'm fucking storming the Capitol. I'm, I'm doing something. Like, I'm, may, I, dude, I can't take this shit anymore. So, you people, speaking of basketball, so they tried, and you people, they tried to convince us that Jonah Hill is a baller. Oh, really? That Jonah Hill, it's so bad. 
It's so bad. Like there's a scene where he steals the ball from somebody and he's on a fast break on it. Like his dribbling is so terrible. Like that editing, like you got, there's so many things about the movie, but just picture every white black stereotype from 2003. That's what this movie is. It's awful. Pissed me off. I, especially in like sitcoms and stuff, like I understand what they're trying to do, but it drives me insane that they try to make like, like kids or adults either way do sports that clearly they're on TV for a reason. Yeah. They're not on the basketball court for a reason. Why are you going to make them dribble on camera and then somebody try to steal the ball from them or something? Like this is the worst representation of basketball ever. I get angry when I see actors that are not athletic playing athletic roles. Yeah. I get pissed. I get I get yeah. mad. Yeah. I we've talked about this before. Like one of the worst sports movies of all time is it's 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 universally beloved by people and i don't get it it's bull durham i hate i hate that movie a because it's a rom-com but b because the baseball playing in it is so bad yeah tim robbins like what is he doing short arming the ball and like is goofy delivery i get angry about that stuff what what, what do you think the most who what do you think the most convincing sports movie is where the actors clearly look like they've played a sport before played the sport that they're portraying in the movie i mean does it have to be a a, like a a playing a sport or could it be like boxing or something like that yeah it could be whatever i don't care i don't know about like most convincing but i mean i know that there's you know quite a few movies that i've seen where like southpaw like jake gyllenhaal you know put in the work for that movie um he put in the work but do you think he looked I mean, he's not going to look like a, the best fighter in the world to someone who is a boxing fan. Like, I mean, I love that movie. Don't fan. get me wrong. I mean, yeah. he looked he looked good. He looked good. He looked yeah. like he trained. Like Mark Wahlberg in The Fighter looked like he trained and yeah. looked like he actually had like form, right? Like, yeah, he didn't look bad. Have you seen the new George Foreman movie trailer? No. So I actually sent it to my buddy who who was a fighter, and I I was like, hey, watch this and let me know. Like, this seems odd because at times during this trailer. He looks like the guy, the actor looks like he can throw punches. And then it's sometimes it looks like what the fuck? It looks like a third grader in a playground fight in like the 1950s. Like, <laughs> like what is happening? Watch that. We don't need to watch it now. Do we know, do uh, we know the, who's the, uh, do we know the actor who's playing George Foreman? I, he's in, uh, he's from the show Atlanta. That's the only thing I know him from. And I haven't really, I've watched like three episodes of that show. So I, I, and I, to be honest with you, I had to look it up. Like, I don't remember seeing him. So maybe he came later than the episodes that I watched or before. And he's not, I, I have no idea. I'll watch it. I'm interested. Yeah. You know, I think George Foreman's got a cool story and I, you know, I'd love to watch it, but so convincing. So you said Jake Joe and all who, who else, who else? I knew you were going to say that for some reason, because I know you're, you're, that's your, your man crush, Jake Joe and all. Do you like Jake Joe and all? Um... Yeah, I knew it. I'm trying to think of, I, I don't know who, who do, you got to have someone on top of your head. I do. I, I'll give you a couple varsity blues. Okay. I think the football scenes in that movie are incredibly convincing. I think James Vanderbeek was convincing. Do you want to know why he played football in high school? Exactly. So he knew yeah. what the fuck yeah. he was doing. Right. But it's like, don't cast somebody who doesn't know how to throw a football to throw yeah. a football in a movie. It's not going to look good. Right. You know? Uh, it's gonna look like Chris Evans in that that uh, that parody movie. What's that movie? The uh, the one that's a it's a parody of all the teen movies. Like Chris Evans. It's like Chris Evans, one of his first movies. Uh, you know who Chris Evans is Captain America, yes, right? Yeah, I know. Who, yeah. Um, not another teen movie. Not another teen movie. Okay. I would say they. Put I out have a lot, no like, a lot of those. What? I'll say I love they put that out, movie. That was wasn't that a hit for a while? Like putting out movies that were parody movies, spoof parody movies, parody yeah. movie of mm. other stupid movies. <laughs> yeah. But he, in that movie, him and the blonde guy, I can't ever remember that guy's name, both throwing a football, they look silly. Now, it works in a spoof movie. That's fine, but... Right. Um, so, what did I say? I said, uh, what did I say? I said... Varsity what did I Blues. Say? Or no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Varsity Blues. Yeah, yeah, Varsity Blues. Uh, Miracle, story about the U.S. men's hockey team. Okay. Most of those guys looked good playing hockey. Uh, looked like they knew what they were doing. Let me think of a baseball one. So, baseball one... Now, not everyone in the movie does, and I bias here because it's my favorite, one of my favorite movies of all time, but in the movie Major League, you look at Charlie Sheen pitching a baseball, throwing a baseball, it looks great because he's he was an athlete. He played yeah. baseball, he played basketball, he played football. So that's a good one. Again, it's a movie I love, but it doesn't look good at times. Is the You've seen the movie The Natural with Robert Redford. 
Yes, been a long. There are time. some scenes from that movie where he's. Uh, there are a couple of scenes where him throwing the ball, but th- and that's the thing. Like I think it's like an editing thing too. It's like you have scenes where he looks really good. How how is there such a a terrible contrast of him looking good and then looking bad? Like it's not like meeting in the middle. Like it's really good or really bad. Like edit that scene out. Find another scene of him throwing. Like you don't have how many takes did you do? One. Like you almost wonder if like is it stand-ins that are doing the good scenes you versus can tell. actually him in scenes that you know i'm really fucking up here uh let me think of a basketball one so basketball one let me think about why men can't jump i mean woody and wesley snipes looked okay they looked yeah. okay <laughs> they looked okay you trying to get me to talk shit on white men can't jump i'm not gonna do it <laughs> no they i was actually okay. i was actually saying that was a good one you think they look convincing uh, en- enough for a street ball movie yeah yeah i think they look good uh, they look good so above the rim Dwayne okay. Martin, the star of that movie, again, played college basketball. So yeah. it made sense. Made yeah. sense that he would be cast in that movie. So th- those are just a couple. I'm trying to think of a boxing one. So we said Southpaw. We said The Fighter. Oh. Uh... I don't remember. Do you remember? I'd have to go back and watch it. But Ali with Will Smith. Was that? He looks, he, he looks good. Yeah. yeah. He looks good. I, I think he was. Will, I think Will Smith is an athletic enough guy. Yeah, that he could pull that off. He looks okay. I, I've I've read I've read articles and like debate thing, you know, these sports debates about sports movies, but people saying that that's the best representation of boxing in a movie. I don't agree with that, but man, maybe, maybe. I'll tell you if you want to see some bad, another one like like Bull Durham, bad, but it's it's a movie I love still, just because it's nostalgic for me. Have you ever seen the movie Wildcats? Mm-mm. It's from the 80s. Goldie Hawn coaches a inner city high school football team. It's got Wesley Snipes, Woody Harrelson, Michael T. Williamson, you know, Bubba from Forrest Gump. Yeah. Well, Michael T. Williamson plays the quarterback. And dude, whew, homeboy, <laughs> homeboy did not play sports as a kid, man. He looked really bad. And a lot of the guys in that movie did, but it's a fun movie. Yeah, but like Wesley Snipes, like he's been in a football movie, he's been in a basketball movie. But that guy's athletic as fuck. He's a martial artist. Like he clearly right. can hold his own. I want to say I got to watch it again. I always forget about it. But if you seen Bleed for this, it's the story about it's the movie about Vinny Pazienza. Miles Teller plays him. Oh no, I want to. I haven't you seen. Need to see yet. that. Yeah, it's really good. I I think it's a great. I think it's up there for boxing movies. Um, but I, I don't know if I've talked about this on the show before. But all these boxing movies and fighting movies, they always have. The, the most endearing, like, savior of the movie, like, the most endearing character and the the person that saves the movie and makes it, like, go from good to great is the coach or the trainer. Like, if you think about Southpaw, you got Forrest Whitaker. The fighter, you have Christian Bale. Fucking unbelievable performance. And then in Bleed for This, Aaron Eckhart plays Kevin Rooney, which is a guy that trained Vinny Pazienza, but also was Mike Tyson's trainer. And, like, dude, Aaron Eckhart is so good in this movie. For me, he's, like, the standout person. It's but if you if you but then if you go down the list of like and Rocky, you know, you had Mickey, like Mickey was a huge part of why Rocky became Rocky, you know. It's kind of funny if you think about it. But I guess that's kind of that's fighting, right? You have to have to have the trainer that motivates you and makes sure you're in shape and gets you fight ready, I guess. I guess that's the idea as to why it works all the time in movie in these movies, but I don't know. Oh, but Forrest Whitaker's the trainer in the the Foreman movie. Oh, okay. So I will say What's this, a, Vince Vaughn does not th- know how to throw a dodgeball. Doesn't know how to throw a football either. <laughs> he was in Rudy. He had a stand-in throw a football for him. <laughs> because you could see him running, and he runs like a duck. <laughs> yeah, not very athletic. Uh, but he cool. loves sports, too. Like if, if you notice, like a big theme of all of his movies are Chicago sports. Mm-hmm. You know? So good for him. Can't throw a dodgeball. Yeah, he... Uh, <laughs> short arms it. Uh, <laughs> ben Stiller wasn't very athletic looking either, was he? No, the most athletic looking one was actually the the chick. Yeah. Yeah. Like you could tell she's probably actually thrown a softball in her day. Yeah. Probably so. You know that's uh that you know that's uh or who she is, right? Ben Marsha Stiller's Brady. Wife? Is she really? You know she was Marsha Brady, right? That's crazy that that's what you know her from. <laughs> that's so fucking that like <laughs> she I'm was sorry. in Saved by the Bell. Oh, really? I did not know that. One, one episode. One episode. Okay. Again, the things that I retain. 
It's very sad. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. So say by the bell, maybe think about it, but what are, what are some shows that you're, I don't want to say guilty pleasures. Let's not do that because guilty pleasures are, can be, they can, it can go different kinds of ways. But so like, what is a show or shows, TV shows that you like that you're, you hate that you like them? Hate that I like them? Or you're just embarrassed. You would be embarrassed to say like, yeah, I actually like that show. See, like my wife said, well, are you embarrassed that you're such a Saved by the Bell fan? And I said emphatically, fuck no. That shows but, the well, best. That's my, that's my point. Boy Meets World is my. You should be embarrassed. My, my show. Now, oh. should I, if I'm talking to you, yeah, I would be embarrassed, but. To anyone I, don't 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 think of like <laughs> don't count stuff like from when you were a kid think of stuff that's more uh, you know as an adult you started watching something you go i can't and you just you stop and you go i can't believe i'm watching this and you finished it and you i'll tell you one for me is the show girls did you ever watch that no i don't know what that is it was an hbo show that Le you know who lena dunham is yeah she's pretty gross she's actually really gross but it was the show starring her and it's about her and her female friends in new york city my wife still makes fun of me for actually I finished it. Like I watched it, uh, you know, like it's like a sex in the city type of show. Yeah. I, eh, no, well, no, it's not as like, uh, it was a little more dramatic. No, a lot more dramatic than that, but it still had okay. like comedic moments. Okay. Adam driver was in it. He was actually like, if you're looking for comedy, he was the funny one in the show for sure. But yeah, I hate the fact that I liked that show. Uh, it really bothers me. Okay. I'll give you one. Um, have you ever seen the show working moms on Netflix? Do you know what I'm no, talking about? No, I don't even know what that is, but it does no. great. So <laughs> the, the star, the star of the show is that I can't think of what her name is right now. She Mila played, Kunis? No, she played the chick with the rotten tooth on sun. Uh, it's always sunny. Oh yeah. Yeah. Something Maureen Ponderosa. Well, yeah, that's her name was in the show. <laughs> yeah. I don't know her real name. I don't know her fucking yeah. real name. I know her yeah. as dead tooth or Maureen Ponderosa. <laughs> But yeah, so she, it, yeah, that maybe that that might be might be my the show because I actually did finish that. What is that about? Dare I, I dare I say that it's kind of like title suggests? Uh, yeah, it's kind of like rom com ish sorta. I, I I don't know how to explain. We both it. suck. We do suck. <laughs> girls is like I can't like, other than girls. Let me think. Like I'm not embarrassed that I watch Law and Order SVU. I'm not. I love that show. I don't care. It's mindless entertainment. Have you watched Dahmer? We talked about it. No, I watched the first Did episode we? and I don't want to finish okay. it. Okay. I don't care. It's gross. I, I don't, I don't care. Yeah. My wife, I, I don't, my wife, so friends of ours watched it. They really liked it, but they're, you know, into like serial killer movies and stuff. My wife was watching it the other day while I was in the living room. And I was just like looking at my phone the whole time. And I'd look up every once in a while and be like, this is not for me. Like this is too, it, it's, it's heavy in a, like really heavy in a direction that I have no desire to go in yeah me neither uh, to, to me the show just I, I but again i didn't finish it so i don't know but just from what i gathered in the first episode like they really try to dig deep on his dad and like his childhood but i don't think they did a good job of that i think it was this guy's gross he's always been gross and the people that raised him are gross and you're just gonna be grossed out yeah. like i didn't i didn't feel i know what they were going for like they tried to like with the opening scene where he meets the guy in the bar and he brings him home and they try to make you feel i did this is not just me they try to make you feel uneasy and sort of like, ugh, like uh, you know, a little bit sort of like, I like maybe scared, but on on edge a little bit. I didn't feel that way. I was just like, can we get to it already? So you gonna fucking eat this guy or what? Like, I, I hate this. I don't like this. And I felt like, the, did you watch the Ted Bundy movie with Zac Efron? I did. Did you like it? I liked it for what it was. I liked it for what it was, but I felt like with that story and that guy, there was a story to tell. Does that yeah. make sense? Like with Dahmer, I feel like that. It's just he was a fucking gross piece of shit. Like and, I, I and it and it wasn't it wasn't like that big of a story to to do this about. I think. Yeah. I, yeah I, I, I mean, I mean, oh, hang on. What I don't I don't mean big of a story. I mean like I guess I mean that long of a story maybe. Right. Like he didn't kill like hundreds of people is what I'm trying to say. I guess like he Who, Dahmer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess the whole thing about like he's doing it in this apartment complex and people are like, calling the police and the police aren't doing anything about it. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe one day I'll go back and finish it, but I doubt it. Doubtful. Doubtful. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just not. It, it's, it doesn't make you kind of think like how good of a show Dexter was. Yeah. Because it made it made you feel bad for a serial killer. Yeah. That, that was the beauty of Dexter. And that was the, yeah. what was great about it. Yeah. Uh, that, that's why the, you know, 
No, absolutely. You 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 were rooting for a guy who killed people in the you yeah. know the simplest the simplest <laughs> terms. Like that's what you were doing. You didn't feel bad yeah, that I you mean, liked a guy I, that was a, a murderer, serial yeah. killer. Yeah, I mean, I guess the opposite of that is he was kill he was killing bad people. Well, obviously, so that, that's that's the motivation. But, yeah. You know, if he wasn't, we would be cunts for liking him. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I guess that's well, it doesn't matter now, but the the show Girls, I think that's why I liked it is the writers of that show did a really good job at making you hate the characters even though you were supposed to like them. Okay. Like they were all supposed to have these redeeming qualities about them, but at the end of the day you just hated them. And you wanted to continue to see them fuck up. I guess is the That's why I enjoyed it. You know a show that we both watched and we both liked, but I've never heard anybody else say the name of this show before is that friends from college show. I would never think that you would have liked that show. I think it's good. I, 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 I let me, let but me, I, let me say I this. Could, I could see that being one where we're like, uh, I'm not going to like talk to my friends about watching this show. <laughs> I, and I never have. You're the only one I've talked to about it. So yeah, no, no, I've never recommended that to anybody. <laughs> And believe me, if I didn't sit down with my wife and start watching it with her, I probably never would have clicked on that ever. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. No. Somehow I knew you were going to bring that up in this conversation. I, I don't know why. <laughs> but it was it was it was good for what it was. It was, it was all right. Yeah. It's funny. This you know I I, I like uh I like the sort of I well uh, to me it brought this sort of humor that Fred Savage would write into It's Always Sunny because yeah. you know he directed. A couple of oh, yeah. those episodes or well i think it's been a lot of episodes now right a lot of them yeah yeah so i felt like a lot of that humor was kind of brought into that show at times especially with his character and his partner and their interactions with people like so i, I there you know it, it had its moments i liked it i would like to know what fred savage's net worth is dude his, his catalog is huge you say fred savage had a huge catalog i did fred savage net worth been doing it a long 30 million not too shabby not too shabby He's only 46. I thought he would be older than that. How old was he in Wonder Years? A kid. He was an actual kid, dude. He was a child actor. I know, I know but... Mean? He's earned back-end points on a number of shows that have sold for huge amounts in syndication. Fred directed 20 episodes of Two Broke Girls, 14 episodes of Modern Family, oh wow, and 19 episodes of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Hey, I'm going to yeah. tell you right now, uh, I'm blaming this on Al Coretta. I've been watching Modern Family, and it's a really good show. Yeah, my wife started watching it recently, and I watched one and a half episodes with her. It's okay. I'm not crazy about it. Really? No, it's okay. I mean, there are some annoying characters in the show, but like the show overall, I've never been big on the type of show where like they they sit in front of the camera and talk to the camera and then go back to a scene and then come back and talk to the camera and then go back to the scene kind of thing. But this yeah. show does for me. I don't know why. I want to give you a fun fact, but I think I might be wrong, so I'm going to look it up. Give me one sec. Did you like Married with Children? I mean, it it, it was okay for the time. I'm yeah. sure it I I, I, now. I watched an episode recently. Like, it was on TV, like regular TV, and I was doing stuff around the house. Man, I'm like, ooh, this doesn't hold up at all, does it? This sure is it not. Does. So the role that Ed O'Neill plays in that show yeah, was originally supposed to be cast for Craig T. Nelson. In, in my, his role in Modern Family? Yeah. Do you know who Craig T. Nelson is? I, I know the name. Why I can't put a face to it, though. Who you remember it? the show Coach? Oh, really? Yeah, I don't see it. Okay. That would have been bad. was a way better, way better yeah. choice. That would have been not good. Yeah, I remember hearing about that somewhere. Originally, the role... Uh, who? So who's Phil Dunphy in that show? He's the dad. I mean, he's the, he's the one married to... Uh, What's her name that used to be Mrs. Fawn? Okay, yeah, yeah. So that was uh, originally supposed to be Matt LeBlanc. Ugh, can't see that either. <laughs> yeah, right. Dude, have you seen any of the uh, like random sitcoms that he's in? So like, no, th no, God, no. There's a there's a phenomenon, I guess you'd call it, of a bunch of different characters in yeah. different yeah. sitcoms that get put into other sitcoms like yeah, together. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? Like, uh, yeah. So do you remember the show? Yes, dear. I know. Uh, yeah. I never watched it. Okay. Well, I cannot that. stand <laughs> that guy in that show. <laughs> I've never seen him in anything else ever. He was in, the, he's the most annoying person. He was in the movie, the rock. He was the hairstylist. You remember that? 
Okay. I just want to know if you like your haircut. <laughs> hey, fuck you. All right. <laughs> he just threw a guy over a balcony. Fuck you and your haircut. Okay. <laughs> I hate that. Gone. Well, so what about it? The Matt LeBlanc? Well, so one of the women in the plays in Yes, Dear is in the latest sitcom married to Matt LeBlanc. He's in a he's in a sitcom right now. I don't know if it's still going. He was oh. he was in one. Did you but... ever watch you watch Friends? I did. Yeah. You're not embarrassed about that? Nah. No. It was too, it was too big of a show are, to be. Are you a Big Bang Theory guy? Uh, I was at one time. Not anymore. I tried, man. And boy, was I angry watching that. Yeah, like I a- I don't I didn't get it and and maybe that's just maybe it's like it's a uh, middle america humor like it's meant for couch potatoes that just will turn on anything that's why american idol is still on tv but like yeah. i remember a specific scene on the one episode that i try to watch so who's the guy the main character the guy the big nerd the well they're all nerds but the shit the one that plays sheldon yes the, uh, i can't think of what his name is off the top of my head yeah so that guy but so there's a scene where he walks into a room and two people are talking to each other and they're talking about going somewhere the term like the term like duo and best friends comes up and then that guy's character he goes well can i be your tertiary friend and it's just an eruption of laughter from the laugh tracks i'm like what was funny about that the fact that he used an unnecessary word like tertiary or the fact that he even said it in the first place i don't understand what's funny here and i immediately turned it off after that i'm like that's what? that's uh, something that joe rogan has talked about a number of times i don't know if you heard it or not but he said that if he you would be disgusted if you would li- if you watch Big Bang Theory without laugh tracks. It's just, oh, he's yeah. like, it's garbage. It's like it's terrible. I feel the same way about How I Met Your Mother, but you love that show. You're not embarrassed about that either, huh? I actually just started. I turned that on the other night, like when going to bed. Don't do what you're about to say. What you started? What How I Met Your Mother? I did not okay. start. Like, what were no, you? No, no. I thought you were going to say you started watching How I Met Your Father. We were going to oh, have to God. have a serious talk. Uh, I watched the first episode, and it's garbage. Oh, yeah. Okay. Good. Again, like I don't know who are those shows meant for. I don't understand it. I mean, apparently people are still watching. Well, clearly, what do I know? Yeah, absolutely. Do you ever watch the? We we totally got off Rihanna quickly, didn't we? It's like we, <laughs> we I, I threw the Nelly curveball and we're done for. <laughs> we we can call it after this. But so like, have you ever watched the movies that made us on Netflix? I've watched a couple of them. Yeah. Did you watch the Back to the Future one? I think I watched the first half of it. So how it was originally Eric Stoltz was in it and not yes, uh, Michael yeah, J. Yeah. Fox. Yeah. But did you see some of the people that read for the movie? And that, I don't know if that was in the first half of that. It should have been in the first half. But some of the other people that read for that role of, of I, I think I've heard, I've heard this before. I don't think I've seen it. But like a young before. Ben Stiller? Yeah, that's I right. I was like, yeah. what in the fuck? Like, where did the... Uh, it was Ben Stiller and, but yeah, if you look at some of the takes or the footage with Eric Stoltz as Marty McFly, you're like, oh my God, this movie would have been an epic failure if he had stayed in the movie. I wonder, um, so you say young Ben Stiller. Yeah. Was, I wonder how, I wonder what year Heavyweights came out. <laughs> compared it was to long when, before, it, this was long before Heavyweights. I know, but I'm wondering like how many years. Back to the Future was 85. I want to say Heavyweights was 95. At least. Okay. okay. Right? Probably so. You're probably right. So Ralph Macchio, uh, John Cusack, Johnny Depp. I haven't heard the name John Cusack in a while. I, Charlie Sheen. Wait a minute. Jeff Goldblum was considered to play Doc Brown before the no, casting okay. of Christopher Lloyd. Yikes. Yikes.